Welcome every day, everyone. Today we will be sharing the extended analysis from our 2018 SAS R or Python Flash Survey, which examines analytical tool preferences among data scientists and analytics professionals and how they've changed over the past few years. Flora Zhang, Birchworks Early Career Analytics Recruiting Specialist, will be sharing the results with you. An executive recruiter at Birchworks, Flora is well versed in the analytics space having been a quantitative market researcher at Nielsen for several years. She also spent three years doing competitive analysis, tracking studies, and qualitative interviews as a marketing consultant for a digital ad agency. Flora's deep knowledge of the quantitative talent landscape allows her to share insights in numerous blogs and webinars, in addition to speaking to students at many universities on the intricacies of quantitative careers. Flora, would you like to dive into the results? Thanks, Mary. So I had the unfortunate privilege of catching a cold this week, so please forgive me everybody uh, for any coughing or inadvertent uh, voice cracks that you hear today, but we will see how this goes. Um, so to kick things off, let's give you a high-level snapshot of our findings this year. So we analyzed the preferences of nearly 1,200 data scientists and predictive analytics professionals to identify their current tool of choice. Is it R, Python, or SAS? And as you can see, it was a very tight race. SAS, R, and Python were all within one percentage point of each other, with R and Python coming in at 33% and SAS squeaking by with a win at 34%. In subsequent slides, we'll also cut the data by factors like experience, industry, and more just to see how preferences vary. And you'll also see how the pie chart hasn't always looked this way. So in the world of analytics, things are always evolving as I'm sure you know. Just over the past five years even recently, you can see things have changed quite a bit. So in 2014 and 2015, we examined SAS versus R preferences and added Python in 2016 due to popular demand. And since then, it's climbed from 20% to 33% of the votes. And this is a trend that we noticed in pretty much every segment that we analyzed this year. Support for Python is definitely increasing. Now, one of our favorite parts of doing this analysis is actually being able to break these preferences down by demographic factors. So let's go on and take a look here. First, let's take a look at how preferences vary based on a professional's years of work experience or seniority. So since Birchworks is a recruiting firm, we don't actually ask professionals how old they are. However, we do know their years of quantitative work experience, which takes into account how many years since they first entered the analytics or data science fields. This might be after university or for those who changed careers when they switched into the field. As you can see, support for Python is highest among those at the early career level with five or less years experience, and support for staff is highest among professionals with 16 plus, 16 or more years of experience. And professionals in the mid-career stage with about 6 to 15 years of experience do prefer R, though the levels of support are relatively even between the three tools. Now since this is our extended analysis, we can actually take a look at how preferences changed from 2017 to 2018 for each experience level. For professionals at the early career level, support for R fell from 51% in 2017 to 38% in 2018, while Python rose from 30% to 48%. SAS actually barely registers with this group at only 14%. At the mid-career level, this trend was a bit more muted with R and SAS dipping slightly and Python rising. And then professionals with more than 16 years of experience still favor SAS, although it did fall somewhat. And then Python overtook R by one percentage point at 27%. Shifts at the junior end can often be foreshadowing growing changes in the market. And when we look at preferences among professionals with zero to five years of experience over the past three years since Python was added to our survey, it's clear that Python is gaining, and it's mostly at the expense of R. Python support among professionals with five or fewer years of experience has actually doubled from 24% in 2017 to 
in 2016 to 48% in 2018. Support for both R and SAS has been declining for this group as well. Now let's take a look at how preferences vary depending on the industry of employment. So Python support continues to be highest at tech and telecom firms while SAS maintains strongest hold in industries like financial services and healthcare and pharmaceuticals. So part of this may be due to preference, but it's also no coincidence that SAS, the only non-open source tool on this list, remains prevalent at many institutions like banks and pharma companies where proprietary and sensitive information is more likely to be housed. And then R does continue to see support in the retail and CPG industries while Python gains support in every industry. Now let's take a closer look at preferences among professionals employed at financial services and consulting firms. In financial services, you can see that although SAS preference has fallen below 50%, it was actually mostly steady from last year. However, Python has continued to ascend, and support for R has dropped sharply. You can see a similar trend in consulting as well, Python gaining as R drops, though SAS has also dropped a bit from last year. Next we also examined how preferences shifted in geographic regions. As with last year, the largest proportion of Python supporters are on the west coast with the mountain region close behind. There is really no surprise there given the boom of tech companies in those regions as we talked about the industries. And similar to 2017, our support is strongest in the Midwest and SAS is most dominant in the Southeast. This is an interesting find. Um, is it coincidence that SAS is actually headquartered down there and taught by many of the surrounding universities? I'm just, just saying, throwing that out there. Um, but regardless, you know, Python has really gained support in every region when compared just a year ago to our 2017 survey results. And then just to echo that, you know, looking at some three-year trends, we do see Python climbing sharply in the mountain region while in comparison the Southeast is still favoring SAS, and Python's rise here is a bit more muted. Out on the West Coast, which has the strongest support for Python at 42%, SAS has fallen to 23%, and R is falling as well. Next, we looked at how preferences vary depending on academic degree level. So let's take a look here. Bachelor's and Master's degree holders continue to show the strongest support for SAS, while PhD holders have consistently favored open source tools like R and increasingly Python. This may do, be due to many reasons, including the use of open source tools in research and academic settings, which establishes a tool preference that they carry with them into their business careers, as well as the lack of licensing costs and the ease of putting Python models into production, among others. When comparing the three-year trend for both PhD and Master's degree holders, we see that although Python support has been climbing among both groups, it has risen much more drastically for PhD holders, climbing from 23% in 2016 to 43% in 2018. Then among Master's degree holders, support for stats actually has increased slightly from last year, while R fell from 43% to 34%, and Python climbed 6 percentage points. Now let's take a look at one of the more stark comparisons we've examined, that of data scientists versus traditional analytics and predictive analytics professionals. So while in many cases the distinction between these two titles can be blurry, here at Birchworks we actually separate data scientists from traditional predictive analytics professionals because of the differences in salaries, tool usage, data volume, and structure, and a variety of other factors. And I think the main difference is that we define data scientists as those working primarily with unstructured or streaming data, while traditional predictive analytics professionals work primarily with structured data. 
This distinction is important for our salary reports, but it also shows noticeable differences in tool preferences as well. Data scientists overwhelmingly prefer Python, while predictive analytics professionals working with structured data tend to prefer SAS or R. Here you can see the three-year trend for both predictive analytics professionals on the left and data scientists on the right. In predictive analytics, support for SAS stayed relatively steady with Python appearing to cut into R support. Data scientists, however, have always favored open source tools, especially Python, with SAS barely a blip on the radar. Data scientists are the segment with the most stark contrast between tools, and nearly 70% of them favor Python. So here is the million dollar question, of course, which tool should you learn? And you know, here is the non-million dollar answer. You know, truthfully, there is no one answer I can give you. SAS is still preferred by some more traditional teams or in areas like financial services and healthcare and pharma. But most data scientist teams or other forming analytics groups are really calling for R and Python, and trends might point to a takeover by the latter in coming years. So the most important piece of advice we give job seekers regarding tools is to keep your skills fresh. You know, take a look at the job descriptions for the industries or the companies where you want to work and see what they are looking for. And to be honest, you know, it is always the more the merrier. Regardless of which tool you learn, if you only know one tool, your options may be limited. While programming skills are certainly transferable, companies generally tend to show at least some semblance of preference. So it is ideal to be nimble rather than lose out on a dream job for that reason. And while SAS is more cost prohibitive, if you are trying to pick up the ladder, download it on your personal computer. It is all free. You know, there are a lot of free or cheap online resources such as Coursera, Udacity, Kaggle, and many more where you can learn new tools and practice applying your skills. The more you can demonstrate your abilities with different tools, certainly the more marketable you are going to be when you are looking for a job. So that is enough for me today. Um, back to you, Mary. Thank you, Flora. So for those of you who aren't familiar with us, Birchworks is an executive recruiting firm specializing in quantitative fields like analytics, data science, and marketing research. We are the leading resource for insights about the hiring market and produce three comprehensive salary reports every year for our main specialty areas. These reports each contain 30 plus pages of data and can be downloaded for free at birchworks.com study. If you are looking to browse for new opportunities, you can check out our niche job board, which is trafficked by thousands of quantitative professionals in a variety of fields. Our job board is open to clients, so if you are just looking for a targeted place to post your job listings, definitely get in touch with us. If you are interested in more insights about the analytics and data science hiring market like the ones presented today, check out birchworks.com slash blog where we post periodic updates with hiring market insights and analysis, including flash surveys on hiring demand, what motivates, what motivates analytics and data science professionals to change jobs, and machine learning usage. You can also follow Birchworks across our social media channels to stay updated on our latest research. Our YouTube channel has videos on salary research, career development, and much more, all tailored specifically to analytics professionals and data scientists. If you'd like to see if we have roles that are fit for your experience or to discuss hiring needs, send us an email at info at birchworks.com to start the process. Thank you so much for joining us today, and have a great day.